little shot to Tony, uh, mm. who canceled this weekend because he had a cruise to go on. He's actually turned in the first draft of a novel uh, that we're doing. So the Grand Place for War of the Dead is, for those who have actually read the timeline, is this is actually an 80-year struggle between the force of the living versus the force of the dead. And we come in... Um, a long-term plan is Jesus. Wow. Our, our background is in licensing and merchandising, and we were just tired of licensing and merchandising other people's stuff. So we decided to create our own. Okay, that's Liz Baxter, one of our zombies, and uh, here's Dan, uh, Dan DeVestia, uh, another one of our zombies. As, as you can see, they've taken their makeup off to be here with us tonight. Uh, next question, please. You're all freaked out by this guy, I know. Yes? I think your cast is very great. I mean, by episode two, they've already established themselves. Already, everybody knows who they are. I think it's great. But my question goes to Andrew, who a Scottish accent is like one of the hardest accents to come across. Is that in your background? Is that something you had to develop yourself, or? No, I, I, yeah, I've trained and I worked on a film uh, about two years ago called Down Clown, and uh, they gave me the option to do an accent, and that's the one I chose. Very hard. Thank you. It's excellent. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you all for coming out. Next question. Yes, hi. Let me repeat that for those who can't hear. The birth scene was really gross, she said. And she wondered if, uh, if for the women involved, was it difficult? Take it away, women. Um, well, the way we actually shot, it kind of worked because I was able to kind of get my, my um, stuff out of the way and that was the great grand finale, so I was able to kind of really prep emotionally and it was it was intense for both of us. I mean, I had to go off in my own world for like a half hour afterward and like kind of like cool down and it was really, it was intense and if it wasn't as emotional and intense, it wouldn't have played and read as well as it did. It was really, it was disturbing for me personally. Yeah, it was. It took every strength I had, and then they all came in on me afterward. All yeah. <laughs> It was a little easier for me because I got to lay there with my eyes closed. So I felt everything and the wetness and what was going on. But you know, it, it was intense. It, it was definitely intense, and I felt for Dina. Yeah, we, we had to do that in very few takes. So and there was no rehearsal. We just went in and did it. So I had no clue what it was going to feel like, the, the smell, and it was yeah, it was real in my mind. It was just one of the hardest things I've ever Right there. What's your uh, shooting schedule like? When do you get the scripts? How long does it take to film and put into post production? Well, the scripts are actually pretty, pretty easy to do. It's the getting the money to do the episode that takes I'm the longest. <laughs> I'm sure nobody here has any experience with that. Okay. Um, our shooting schedule is is uh, we are trying to do like three or four episodes a year, and then at the end of the year, put them all on DVD and market it through through standard distribution. The beauty is right now we're doing this at a time where a lot of people are starting to watch television series in a row on DVD, so the behaviors are there. Um, and uh, you know, there's all sorts of, I, I don't want to come up here and start you know, doing the typical bullshit that you hear, like, oh, we're talking about this, we're talking about that, but we're talking to a lot of people. A lot of people are interested and they want to see this go somewhere else other than um, you know, the internet, you know, which is really strange. It's like, we're going to be distributed. We got, we got approached by a guy who said he wanted to license this for distribution in Asia on cell phones. And, and I'm like, you know, I guess the next thing is smoke signals and CB radio. <laughs> I don't know where else it's going to go. It's like, you know, please just put it on the damn television that my parents can see. Not that they watch this. And by the way, kudos to the parents of the cast members for actually sitting through this. Thank you very much. Next, uh, next victim. Oh, here, Joe, I got a side note on Joe. <laughs> Hello, Joe. Yes, <laughs> um, in terms of, you know, how quickly we've been able to, to shoot things, um, once we actually get on set, I think all of us here can attest to just the camaraderie we have as individuals for the show. So once we actually get live on set, working with the script, we, we tend to be able to kind of motor through things fairly quickly. We kind of already have a certain respect and love for one another anyway. Um, and the crew and everybody that works on it is so great. We seem to kind of fly through without too much trouble. A lot of it, you know, we all wish that Mike, the writer and director, and if we could give him a hand, even though he's not here. Mike is amazing. He's a fantastic 
fantastic writer and he's such a great director uh, to work with. And he, he gives us a lot of leeway, you know, in terms of our team and what it is that we do and how we say things and what it is we say and what's going on. So, you know, at the end of the day, we have such a great time with everybody anyway. We show up to work, but it doesn't really feel like work. And so we can kind of crank things out fairly quickly, which saves people money and I think makes everybody happy. Thank you for that, Tom. Um, <laughs> I have to read this page of people here. It's all about saving money. Um, Mike Desario, who sadly couldn't be here today. And is Melissa taping this for his benefit? Hi, Mike. We miss you. We love you. Um, Hi, Mike. Mike has a really light touch on the set. I don't, I've only been to the set once because production scares the crap out of me. <laughs> and I just get in the way. But um, the, the beauty is you watch the, the way that all these guys work and the way Mike handles the set. It's like everyone's playing, you know? I mean, at least from what I see, it's like, Jesus Christ, this is, you don't hear about this stuff all the time. So I hope that we, you know, do more episodes more frequently and we can all, you know, have a good time doing this going forward. So please keep supporting the show. Next question. Next question. Okay, we'll take one more in the back and then we're going to get running. Yes, sir. Is that going back to the movie? I'm sorry? Did you decide to go with fast? You know, we couldn't go through one of these without a fast versus slow zombies question. But if you guys, if, if any of you have picked up the uh, zombie outbreak survival kit, which started this whole thing a long time ago, we got all kinds of zombies. You just happen to be in a commune of people who have recently been infected. So according to our mythos, they still got some ambulatory motion. But in episode three, where we got a script just right now, you're actually going to see some pretty old shamblers, or what we call class fives. Um, and those guys, I mean, you, you, they, they're not going to catch up with you, you know. But of course, if you're in a room with 12 of them, they're just as scary. Um, okay, Tony wants us off the stage, so Voltaire can finally get on and, and send you guys out. So thank you all very much. Thank you guys.